Amen. Well, good morning. Glad, glad everyone's here, all of us. Um, glad we made it uh, for that hour. You know, I was thinking two weeks ago, I think it was maybe just a week and a half ago, uh, when Pastor Steve asked me to come up and share a message. Um, I know you guys are surprised. Usually it's like two months. It's, it's, it was last month to the day on February. So I was thinking, though, um, like, he's having me do it on probably the worst day ever. Like, this is like the worst day. I mean, it, there's not a bad day to preach. Like, I love sharing what God is laying on my heart. I love um, getting up here and just talking about Christ and, and Jesus and just sharing the gospel. But what the, that's the worst day. This is the worst day because people are, they're just tired and they're not, and they'll probably be strolling in. And then I'm going to have to, you're going to have to go back and get the notes later because everyone's going to be looking at the door. Anyway, um, I'm excited to be up. Up here today, um, I didn't get uh, really um, this, what I was going to talk to you about until probably like later in the week, probably because we started back in volleyball. I coach varsity volleyball um, out at Plainfield East, but um, I kind of knew what I was going to talk about. But then Alexa's like, I think this is probably what you should. You've been, you've been studying this. And I was like, you know what? I just had that thought this morning. That was like yesterday. So like, so I had something and then we kind of, well, it was Friday, but um, started writing uh, a couple nights ago and then finished it up yesterday. Super excited um, to share this message with you. Um, and it's one of those messages that are, that, that are rough, that are difficult, or can be difficult uh, to share, mainly because we don't have enough knowledge on the issue. So today's message is entitled, and I thought long and hard about this, I didn't. Okay, Josh actually came up with it. Where's Josh at? He came up with it. There he is. Okay. Um, it's, just, it's just called The Rapture. The Rapture. Some of you are like, oh man, this is, this is going to be rough. And, and see, right away you get like this, this feeling of, ooh, like you don't know a whole lot about it, but it's like this thing where Jesus comes and we just get... Okay, and then I read those Left Behind series books that came out in the 90s. I read those and like, I am scared. Okay, so um, a couple things before we get started. The lens through which we need to see this thing. The lens that we need to look at the end times, the last days, the rapture, like all these things, the lens that we need to look at it through is not... Um, to frighten you. It's not to frighten us. Okay? And throughout, throughout the sermon today, I, I hope, the hope is that you get excited about this. You get excited. If you're a believer in Christ, that, that it ignites you to do a couple, maybe a few um, things, but it, you get excited about Jesus returning for his church. You get excited about it. So I was in the bathroom. It's usually where God talks to me, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I'll leave it at that, okay? Usually just where God talks to me. Um, and I had this thought, and I was like, you know what? This is like one of those, this is like one of those discussions that I have. I'm a teacher as well, um, that I have with either my high schoolers when I was in the high school or now my eighth graders about sex ed. Like, you don't want to get pregnant? Don't have sex. You don't want to get an STI? Don't, don't mess around. Like, like these are one, and then they're like so scared. They're like, oh, oh, like they get like so scared. This is not that message. We're not like scaring you to say the rapture isn't like one of those things where it's like has to be scary, meaning like, oh, it's just fire insurance. I don't want to go to hell, so I'm saved today. I want to get raptured today. Well, yes, amen. Thank God. But there's so much more than that. There's so much more that goes into this message, this rapture, okay? So the lens is not a scary lens, and hopefully as we dissect some of these things, you guys can just take a breath, okay? Because I know it's not one of, one of the favorite uh, topics, but we need to be informed. We absolutely need to be informed on this issue, and a lot of people don't want to be informed. They don't want to. I was telling my mom, she's not here, bless her heart. 
okay, she had to work. Um, but usually she's here. But I was telling my mom, I was like, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to talk about. She's like, don't you just want to talk about forgiveness? <laughs> I was like, well, that's a good one. Like, I guess Jesus forgives. So like, there you go, right? Um, but I was like, no, this is what, she's like, I just don't want to know about that stuff. <laughs> and I was like, you, along with like everyone else, doesn't want to know. They just would rather scoot around the issue. But this but this subject, prophecy, is written all over the Bible. It is all over. You cannot hide from it. You can't hide from this stuff, okay? So this is a part of our faith. This is a part of our faith. So um, I'm going to do my best. Um, there's a scary word here. Um, well, I mean, fasten your seatbelt first and foremost because, like, I'm going to throw a lot at you. Look at me, please. I'm going to type this up for you. Okay, I don't have it typed up now, but I'm going to type it up this week, and I'm going to put it, well, Alexis is going to put it, or Danielle, on the Bible, on our app, our Firehouse app, okay? So you could go back and look at all my notes. Um, it'll be typed, so there's no scribbles or anything like that. So go back and check out the notes, if you, if, because we're going to go fast. I only have 35 minutes. That's it, okay? We're going to go quickly through some of this stuff as quickly as I can to where you have a, a general understanding of it. Um, so let's go. Um, we're living in the last days. Now that's a scary word, last days. Um, in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 2, it starts, this is um, after, uh, what you call it, after Pente this is Pentecost, so after the Holy Spirit comes, in Acts chapter 2, you don't have to flip there, it's going to be on the screen, hopefully, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes, and Peter now realizes, he's like, this is the Holy Spirit, this is what the prophet Joel prophesied would happen concerning the last days, so this is what he says, and in the last days it shall be. Okay, let's stop right there. And this isn't even the meat of the, the issue here, okay? The last days literally is between the first coming and the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years, okay? All right? Ooh, are you scared still? Okay, like 2,000 years. These are the last days. But the, the believers back then, they couldn't wait for him to come back. Have we lost that? Have we lost that fire? Like, they, they probably knew he probably wasn't coming back in their lifetime. Like, Paul probably, he knew that. But he still, he was like, please just take me. Just take me. Okay, have we lost that? In your life, have you lost that? And it goes on, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. That's because they nap a lot. Um, even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. These are the last days. The Holy Spirit, Jesus left. He said, look, if I, if I don't leave, the helper is not going to come. If I don't leave, the helper is not coming. You know who the helper is? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is for today. The Holy Spirit is for now, these last days. But we got to desire and walk with the Holy Spirit. This is not part of my notes, but you just need to know that. Okay? And this is Peter. Peter, this is who denied Christ three times. Weren't you with Christ? No, that wasn't me. Okay? And then the rooster, you know, you know the story a little bit. Okay? All right, he denied him, but he got filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, he's out in front of people just preaching the message. Preaching the message. Peter also reminds us to stay alert and sober-minded. We've talked about that. Pastor Steve has talked about that through the Check Your Oil series, staying alert. So it is so important in these last days that we pay attention Christian, believer, you have to and must pay attention to what's happening. Okay. There will be a rapture. There will be a rapture. Yes, amen, yes. There will be. Now, this is an issue. 
some of you are like, I don't even know what that is. I'll get there. Believe me, I'll get there. Okay, I promise you. There will be a rapture. The issue is not that if there will be a rapture, there's a lot of debate within this topic of when the rapture will happen. Of when it's going to happen. So not if, but when. At the firehouse, we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And I'm going to dissect a lot of what that means today. Tribulation period is a seven-year period, and then there's a three-and-a-half-year great tribulation period, which we might cover just a tiny bit of that, um, that is going to happen when God comes back for his church and raptures... Okay, the Greek word is um, harpazo. Okay, it means to literally catch up, snatch up. Jesus is like throwing a net down. He's like, come here. Okay, sounds violent. Okay, but he, Jesus wants us out of this place so that God can solely focus on Israel. And you're like, what's so important about Israel. Okay, well, Israel is God's chosen people. Israel is God's chosen people. So God is, we are in an age of grace, the age of the Spirit, okay? That means that right now, God is, is very patient with our screw-ups. God is very, very patient with us. He's so patient that he does not want any of us to perish, but all of us to have everlasting life. He wants that. He desires it. But there's coming a time where there is this seven-year tribulation where God's judgment will be poured out onto the earth. We don't... I, if I had more weeks, I would go over that. And some of you are like, this might be enough for today. You might not ever come back. But if it interests you, it's a really good study. How do we know that there is seven years left? Like, how, like where do we just get that number? Do we just pull it out of the air? Is that like raptured too? Like they just pulled it out? No, no, no. Okay, so briefly, briefly, in Daniel 9... Okay, it's not, I'm not going to put it up there, but in Daniel 9, it's prophesied. It's prophesied by Daniel that there is allotted to Israel. Israel's is God's chosen people. It is allotted Israel to have 490 years of existence. And you're like, whoa, we're like in the 2000s. Like, that's way. Okay, I don't have time to explain all of it, but a lot of it has to do with the temple being built and the temple being destroyed. Okay, so there were gaps in those 490 years. Are you with me? We are, and this, I don't have time to go into it because I want to get to like what we're really talking about, um, but you need to know this. There have already been 483 years, according to prophecy. There's already been 483 years of the 490 years that are allotted to Israel. That means there's only seven years left. And those seven years, God's judgment is going to be poured out on those who refuse him, they maybe once had, a, had a, a moment with God, but then they're like, nope, this world is, I want, I desire this world. Okay, you desire the things of this world, you're going to stay here. God doesn't want that to happen, but then that judgment is going to be poured out. Can I just say this really quick? This, as a believer, should drive us to pray for people. As a believer, this should ignite us to say, you know what? I don't want anyone to perish. I don't want anyone to stay here. Have you ever read Revelation after chapter 4? Have you ever read Revelation? That's God's judgment on the people who dwell on the earth. It is not pretty. That should drive us. Christian, that should drive you. In your faith, saying, you know what? I got to dig into this word. I got to learn more. I got to hide God's word in my heart so that when people come and ask me things, 
because it's hidden, I can then say something. But if you don't hide God's word in your heart, you're not going to be able to say anything. And actually, you might walk further away from the faith. So, what's the rapture? What's the rapture then? What are we talking about? What, what is actually the rapture? In your Bibles, can you please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The rapture, I said, is God and, and really is Jesus coming back. And he is taking up. We are going to meet him in the clouds. We're going to meet him in the air. We are, he is going to snatch us up from this world. That is, that is the rapture. So 1 Thessalonians 4 gives us a very, very vivid picture. Okay, Starting at verse 13, I'm going to read all the way through verse 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, meaning those who have passed, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. So he's saying, so that just answers your question. What happens to my loved ones after they die? If they're a believer, after they die, um, okay, they're going to... Uh, cremated, whatever, they're, they're six feet under, whatever, okay? They, like, they're down there. But God is going to raise them, as we're going to see. Verse 15, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up. There's that word, rapture. Caught up, that's what it means. <clears throat> together with them in the clouds. So we're going to be caught up with our brothers, our, our passed away, our deceased brothers and sisters in Christ in the clouds. That's what it's saying. To meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always, everyone say always. This is good news. We will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. God said this is an encouragement. This is an encouragement. As I go through, hopefully, I could get you a little bit more encouraged. Second coming. So is this like the second coming then? Okay, the second coming is kind of twofold. All right, number one, there's an appearing where God appears and, he, and we meet him in the clouds. Where he appears. We, we go where he's at. Well, I heard like Jesus comes back. Yes, he does. Physically, after the seven-year tribulation, Jesus will come back. And those who have been up there, basically partying with Jesus for seven years, okay? Um, after, after that, we are riding with him to rule and reign for a thousand years. This is scripture. I don't have time to get into that, but... You just got to trust me. Or if it, if it interests you, you, you just got to look into this word. Okay? So let me, let me throw some more stuff at you. Um, Titus 2.13. It's going to be up here on the screen. Titus 2, verse 13. It says this, Waiting for our blessed hope. Pastor Steve was talking about that. Waiting for our blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, Thessalonians 7, uh, 4, 17 through 18, um, you'll be caught up in the clouds, it says. So Titus, the appearing, he's not physically returned, just the appearing. Um, then Thessalonians, we get caught up. Wait until you see this one. John 14, it's going to be up on the screen. Um, 1 through 3, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare, or I'm sorry, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, he's talking about you, Christian. If I go to you, your, your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that Jesus got saved or was raised from the dead, you will be saved. You, I prepare a place for you. I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you will be. That where I am, you will be. He's not talking about his physical return to earth. He is talking about where is he now? Where is Jesus now? Anyone know? Where is he at? He's, yes, he's at the right hand of the Father. Hello. Okay, he's up in heaven. Where is he at? He's preparing a place for you. He's preparing a place for you. Even if you're not living, this is in my spirit right now, even if you're not living right, right now, God is speaking to you right now. And he's speaking to you and he's saying, let's go. Let's go. What about your kids? What about your kids? Because you're like, man, I got to... I got to step it up for my kids. I don't want them to be left here. Okay, if that's what God needs to do to get you your butt in gear, so be it. Let's go. Let's go. God doesn't want anyone to perish, but the time is coming. The time is coming. Where he's at, we will be. He's preparing mansions for us, people. This is awesome. He's preparing a house for us. Oh, man, wait till you see this. You ready? This is Revelation 4. Um, now, this is after. Now, you have to understand this. Okay? John is writing. He's on an island. He wasn't beheaded or killed. He's on an island, and Jesus gives them a revelation. Okay? Hence, revelations. Okay? And he's talking to them. And in the first three chapters, he's talking to the church. The churches. The seven churches. Okay? In chapter 4... Something interesting happens. After this, I looked, and behold, the door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here. Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. After what? After what? After the rapture. Hello? Yes, that's what he's talking about. After this, come up here and I'll show you what's taking place after you come up here. You with me? Come on. This is good news. But, but not so good for those maybe who are still struggling in their faith. Or those who you know who don't have a relationship with Christ. From verse 4-1, after this, the church is not mentioned in Revelation until Revelation 20. The church is no longer mentioned in there. We're the church right now. This is the church age. God is coming back for His bride. We are the bride. Okay, girls, that's not a problem. Guys... That's a problem for, like, we're a bride? Yeah, I guess. Okay, we'll get over it. All right? Um, but that's just how it goes. Come up here, he's saying. Okay, so what's the purpose then? Why is it needed? Why is the rapture needed? It's needed so we can stay alert. So we stay on fire for God. We want his coming. We want to leave this sin-filled world. The problem arises. The problem arises when we start storing up our treasure here on earth. When we start, because we cannot see what God has prepared for us. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for us. It's, it can't even, we can't even imagine it, but it's really hard for us because we're so visual. We're so now, especially in today's society. It's instant. We could get instantly anything we need done. Done. God is work. God is work. 
Having a relationship with someone in your life, in our earthly life, is work. Having a relationship with someone requires you to communicate with that person. If not, that relationship is only going to be based on whatever, and it's not going to last very long. It won't. God desires that relationship with us. Okay? So he wants us to stay alert. He also wants us to persevere. So, um, up on the screen, it's going to go, we're going to go to Revelation 3.10. 3.10, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. He's, he's not talking about, now we go through trials in life. We go through trials. God will send us trials. God doesn't tempt us. That's the devil. Okay? And that's when we allow sin to come into our lives. But God will allow us to go through some hardships. Because at the other end, if you endure it, you're going to see His glory. Amen? Amen. So, what else is it? So, um, why is it important? Why is it needed? And a lot of people miss this. I missed it until I started studying this. Okay, um, It's a consummation of the church. Hebrews 9.28 So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, hello, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Wait a minute. I thought I was just saved like just like 10 minutes ago. You just told me like that's how I'm saved if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. Okay? Well, there's two parts of that. You're being saved here right now on this earth, but when Christ comes, if we endure, if we keep going and long for his arrival, boom, consummation. Bam, where he takes his church the bride. He is the bridegroom. He is taking us. It, like The imagery is so exact in the Bible. You cannot scoot around it. So it is our final act of redemption. Colossians 3, 4. This is good news because you're like, I thought you said we're going to have good news today. Okay, this is good news. You get a new body. You get a new body in heaven. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears, there it is, then you also will appear with him in glory. Oh, man, you get a new body. And in Philippians, it says that your lowly body will now be a glorious body. Okay? Some of you are like, you know what? I said in January I was going to shed a few pounds. Never happened. Okay? And you have all these things right now, but when we go and we're caught up with him, we instantly get a new body. What if, like, my loved one, they were cremated? You don't think God knows that? You don't think God's going to take their ashes and then form them into that physical, spiritual body? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will. And in Corinthians 15, um, 50 through 53, it kind of says the same things. I'm going to paraphrase. Um, it just basically says um, the, the mortal must, come, must become immortal. Okay? We have mortal bodies right now. But we're going to have immortality when we go to meet Christ where he is. Revelation talks about um, the coming of Christ and, and he wants us to be delivered from the wrath to come. So what's the purpose of this? He just wants us to be delivered from the wrath, basically. Okay? First Thessalonians deals with the, the appearing of Christ. Second Thessalonians deals with the Antichrist. We don't have time to go into that today, but if you would like more information, you go to Second Thessalonians or Revelation, or Daniel 9. You just start reading the Bible, start there maybe, and then things just go easy from there on, from there on out, okay? Um, so what we have is, let me find my notes. Okay, so it says in 1 Thessalonians, uh, 
in regards to the wrath. 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You ready? I'm just going to go um, rapid fire here. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. It's not going to be on the screen for you. Wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord? This is why we become a Christian, is to share our faith. Are you sharing your faith? Am I sharing my faith? This should inspire us. Like, look, I don't want you to be left. I don't want my kids to be left. I don't want my family to be left here. This is a reality. This isn't a novel series. This is a reality. We cannot stand by and just watch, just, just say, yeah, I guess I'm a Christian. I prayed a prayer. That was it. No, you cannot stand by. You have to get after it. You got to get in the word. You got to pray. You have to study the Bible. You got to fast. Marcello's like, what are you preaching on today? Give me some more, more. Skin? Okay, if you weren't here last time, you can look up the message. All right. Um, 1 Thessalonians 3, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 4, we already read that, but 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, for God did not appoint us to wrath. He's not talking about hell, by the way. Okay? He already did that on the cross. Salvation. Okay, he already did that. He's not talking about hell. He's not, no, he's talking about the wrath to come. Okay, if you look at the context of 1 Thessalonians. Um, Luke 21, 36. I'll paraphrase, um, but basically it's, it's just saying um, that, well, no, I won't. It says, stay awake at all times. You may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place. Pray, pray, pray that you're going to escape things. So you're just an escapist. You just want to get out of it. Okay, listen, <laughs> you read the Bible, you read some of the things that are going to happen. Yeah, you, you're right. <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay, thank God for that. I am out. I'm not trying to escape anything. Actually, my view on pre-trib or post-tribulation was actually the latter. It was actually post. I thought I was like, I'm a super Christian. I'll get right in there and I'll slap the Antichrist right in the face. I don't care. I'll get there. You know what? And then I started reading and then it's like these people are like, they're going to go through extreme persecution. And I started thinking about this and I'm like, Lord, just help me navigate through this stuff. Help me navigate. And it's clear Beyond a shadow of a doubt, and Pastor Steve, I have his blessing, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. You can't get around it. It's right here in the scripture. So I got to hurry. How will this happen? The Bible says it'll happen in a twinkling of an eye. Of, of an eye. Did you know that? Like, that's not even close to being a twinkle. That's not... That's not even close. That's kind of closer, okay, but not really. Your thought's not even really that close. The twinkling of an eye is like some like science stuff, like it hits the retina and then it goes to the back of the eye and then to the front of the eye. Okay, so these people, it's a billionth of a second. That's so fast, you can't even, boom, we're immortals. That fast. That fast. Some of you are like, well, tomorrow I'll have time to accept Christ. <laughs> you don't have tomorrow. We're only promised right now. Right now. How close is the rapture? How close is this thing that you're talking about? Okay, well, it's closer than yesterday. I don't, <laughs> it's closer than when I first started because we're all still here, I think. I think we're here, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, yeah, so we're all, we're all still here. It's closer than yesterday. But the Bible says in Matthew 24 that, and Pastor Steve was talking about this, that nobody knows the time nor the hour that he's coming. No one knows. So, like, are there going to be signs of the rapture? Are there going to be signs of this rapture for God's church? Yes and no. 
Yes and no. No, because no one knows the hour. So no, there is no sign. It just happens. Twinkling of an eye. Bam. But yes, and here's why I say yes, and you're really going to have to pay attention. Is one of my last points. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? The stage is being set. The stage is being set. If you look around this world, the stage is being set. The stage is being set like never before. Never before. There was a time, and, and I'm going to go over like my top ten, but there was a, there was a time where, where people would read the Bible, pastors, and they wouldn't say the end cannot come until everyone in the world can see something happening. Because that's what's prophesied in Revelation. And people back 50, 60 years ago, how could that even be possible? How can everyone see something that's happening? Hello. Internet. So we are closer now than ever before. But I got a top 10. I got a top 10. The stage is being set. This is just random thoughts that came to my head as I was writing it down. 20th century, bloodiest century of all centuries combined. Bloodiest century. Okay? You remember that in Luke? There will be wars and rumors of wars. Okay? Earth birthing pains. This is a good one. Well, like, we just know more about hurricanes now. We know, like, we could see it on the internet. So, like, that's why there's more of these things happening. No, go do your research. There's more birthing pains. Why? Because when things start heating up, when, when a female is ready to give birth, you know that baby's coming. When the earth starts screaming out birthing pains, as it says in Romans 8, when that starts to happen, you better start looking up. You better start paying attention to what's happening. In Luke, Jesus says great earthquakes. It's funny that when you search great earthquakes, great earthquakes, it's over a 7.5 earthquake, and they've tripled in the last 10 years. It's funny that Jesus used great earthquakes, not just earthquakes, great earthquakes, and then our English language defines them as great earthquakes. It's just interesting. Just throwing it out there. Number three, Israel becoming a nation in 1948. Jerusalem as Israel's city being reestablished in 1967. In Israel, there's only one piece missing. They need a temple. They don't have the temple. But there are makings of the temple already being put in place. The time is drawing near. Um, man, I was going to get into... Eh, I might. Okay, the Pope. You, you got to just pay attention to the world, okay? There's this guy. He's the president of... Um, well, the Pope is in one sh way, shape, or form calling for a one-world religion somehow. Okay? You could read that on your own. Um, this guy, Fre uh, France president, Emmanuel Macron. Um, Emmanuel, number one, okay, uh, Christ with us. Macron, Mark, Christ with us, Mark. Okay, he's not the Antichrist. Well, maybe he could be. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying he is, okay? But he is, he is in Europe, and he is calling for a ten-nation coalition. If you've ever read Revelation, there is a ten-horned beast in Revelation. Okay, these are things that we have to start paying attention to. I'm not saying that that's like gospel truth there. I'm just saying like, could it be? That's where my head goes. These are, the stage is being set. The stage is being set for Christ's return. That's what I'm saying. Probably shouldn't talk about Trump. I won't, okay? But it's a cool, you can look up Trump and how Israelites love him because they relate him to um, Old Testament I'd say characters, people, okay, um, who helped Israel, okay? You could go look that up. Well, I don't have time to get into that. Um, nations against Israel, China's social credit system, one world government, one way to pay. These people in China, they can't even, you could go look it up. They can't even, they can't even, some, some of them can't even um, buy a train ticket because of their social credit. You think this, like, this is not a joke. The, the stage is being 
set in my spirit is number 10 reason. My spirit is just screaming that. And I know there's other Christians that they feel that same thing. How should we live? This is my last point, and then I'm done. How should we live? This is it. Plan as if Jesus isn't coming for a hundred years. That's what you do. You plan as if Jesus isn't coming for 100 years, but you live as if he's coming today. Live as if he's coming today. This, I hope you're encouraged. I hope this ignites you. Maybe in a way you're like, ah, okay, but maybe it does. Maybe it does. Look into some of this stuff. Study some of this stuff. I promise you God's word will not return void in your life. I promise you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for today. I thank you for your word, Lord, although sometimes your word is hard. Sometimes your word hurts and sometimes your word is convicting, Father God. And I just ask, Lord, that you would help us navigate through these times, through this season, Lord. Not even just the season of the world and its condition, Father, but the season of our own life. Whatever we're going through, whatever anyone's going through in here, Father God, would you just be their all in all? Would you be their rock, their fortress, their high tower, their strong place? Father God, that they would put all their trust and their hope in you, Lord. With every head bowed for just a second, we do this every week. You're not joining this church. You're not joining a religion, but you are joining if you choose to do so, the body of Christ. The question is, do you have Christ in your life? Do you have and do you desire to have him? If you would like to start that relationship with, with Christ right now, I want to lead you in a prayer. I want to lead you in the prayer. Right where I'm at, right where you're seated, if you want to give your heart over to Christ today, today is your day of salvation. Today, starting on my left, look up at me. Just lock eyes with me if you want to start. Start this journey. Amen. On my right. Start a journey. Amen. All right, pray this from your heart. Lord, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart that God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my life. Make me brand new. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please?